everybody. So today's video is all about Pac. And Pac's little life on the boat. Pac's been a boat cat now for almost, well, coming up a year. But he's been our cat for six years. Coming up six years. It's going to be Pac's birthday, so... Yeah, on the 10th of May, it's Pac's sixth birthday. So say a big happy birthday to Pac if you're watching this then. He's a very, very good cat, and to be honest, we are very, very lucky to have Pac as a cat, especially being on a boat, because he not only is he very tame, but he... Uh, He's adapted really well. Very well. He goes out, and he comes back. And yeah, we're never worried about him, really. We're just going to talk about some of the considerations of having a boat cat, some of the things you might want to... Hang on, there's cat going on. So, as you can see... Now it's springtime or almost summertime. Pack is molting a lot, so he didn't really molt that much last summer, his no. first summer, as I suppose he did that while we were still living in a house, but now he is molting a lot, so it's probably going to be quite a lot of sweeping up it over does. the next few yeah, weeks. Everywhere. It does. The worst part is when it like if it gets in your eyes, that's yeah. horrible. Or in your mouth. This week's going to be answering the questions on what it's like having a cat on the boat uh, for people who are either thinking about getting a cat, have got a cat and you live on a boat or Even you want to get a boat and you've already got a cat. holidays with your cat maybe. Some yeah. people do that. They yeah. have a cat, live in a house and the cat goes on holidays with them on the boat. So. I did try taking Pac for a walk once, a little column and a lead. Yeah, but, well, uh, we tried a harness, I think, but he got out of it yeah, when he was a bit him. smaller yeah. than he is now. He's not really that type of cat. No, he doesn't like harnesses. He won't wear a collar. Every time we buy him one, he'll just go away and then come back and it's disappeared. But he'll so. bring you a mouse back and put it in your, in your crash cover area, so we've always got that to look forward to. He is an outdoor cat obviously. Um, yeah. We couldn't keep Pac indoors, he just loves the outside world. Um, we used to, well he was born in a caravan and we brought him up in a caravan so he's always been used to kind of small spaces and needing to go outside. So um, one thing about Pac is that he's always liked to travel. So we have a funny story about Pac. Oh, we were in the car, um, we when we used to live in the caravan and uh, we was on our way down over to my nans, and then we were going over to the Asda that I used to work at before. And the petrol station. And the petrol station, that's very right. And uh, we got out of the um, caravan site, and we got probably about two miles down the road. We got and to a roundabout, was, and when we it got It was near to, to town, so it was about five, oh, yeah. seven miles? Seven miles? About seven miles then, and we were going around the roundabout, and in the roundabout, all you heard was meow at the back of the car, and he was actually, he'd snuck inside the car. Hitched a ride. And we took him round everywhere. He had to come to Asda, to my nan's, and my nan's not a big fan of cats. He's been really good with travelling as well, so if we've ever needed to take him to the vets or anywhere else, if we've moved house, he's always been really good with that. Yeah. Um, he's also just a very pleasant cat. He loves all, all humans. But yeah, he's I really see. friendly, yeah. so if you ever see Pac, say hello, um, he answers to Pac, but do watch out if we ever moor by you, as he's taken an interest into kind of checking out the boats nearby and trying to get aboard, so <laughs> be careful. Pac got bored, so by this point he had wandered off. We thought we'd take the opportunity to show you some of the best clips from Pac so far, and to continue talking about life as a boat cat. As we've already mentioned, Pac is an outdoor cat, so unlike some boaters with cats, we don't actually have a cat flap yet. So at the moment, we either let him out via the front door or through the hatch, which you see at the side here. We'll be upgrading the door soon to get a cat flap put in. So let us know if you have any experience with this. One of the key considerations when you have a boat cat is how often you're going to let it out if you do let it out. So we pretty much let Pack out as much as he wants, but we do have a couple of rules in place for when we moor up somewhere new. We are continuous cruisers, so when we moor up somewhere new, we won't usually let Pack out on the first day, or for at least kind of a night or so, until he's more familiar with the area and he kind of understands that we have moved the boat. Um, but he is normally pretty good, like he understands when the towpath changes sides and he hasn't fallen off the boat yet as a result of not knowing where the towpath is, although he has fallen off once because he missed the, the side and it was quite a wide gap. 
So when we move up in a new place, we try to look for somewhere that's A, safe, um, B, kind of near to things if we do require them. Sometimes we don't and it's nice to be in a more rural location. Um, C, internet, because when I'm working, my job is from home or from the boat, so I rely on internet. Um, and D, it needs to be somewhere that Pat can go outside and be safe. So we've found some places, especially on the Worcester and Birmingham Canal, where it's been really difficult to let Pack out because there's a train line running alongside it or it's in the city and it's otherwise unsafe for Pat. So we have to be careful about where we moor and consider Pat. One reason why we don't particularly like letting Pack out in the city is because we've always lived in rural areas. So. Although he is vaccinated, he has been vaccinated, we don't particularly want him to come into contact with city cats because the vet recommended that they're more likely to carry diseases, so we try to keep him indoors if we're in a big city like this. This brings me on to a really important consideration for boaters, especially continuous cruisers who don't have a mooring or kind of marina that they live at, um, and that is veterinary care for your cat or for your pet in general. You need to be able to access a vet for emergency treatment, for regular vaccinations and for other things that you might need for your pet, such as kind of regular worming and flea treatments. This applies to other animals, not just cats. And that brings me on to another point. I think microchipping is really important. Especially if you are just moving onto the boat with your cat or if you're taking your cat perhaps on narrow boating holidays, it's really important that you do get your cat microchipped so that if your cat goes missing or something does happen, like an accident, it can be traced. Microchipping is widely available at vets and some charities. It usually costs around maybe 20 to £25 for a cat, so not too much, and it's highly recommended, especially if you're moving onto your boat or getting a cat on your boat or even holidaying. Another thing to consider is getting a collar and ID tag for your cat with either your boat name or definitely your mobile telephone number or some way of contacting you. As we did mention, Pack did fall in, but luckily for us, Pack can swim. And if not, he does have nine lives. Although we don't want to test that. <laughs> Pack is almost six years old, so while he's not a kitten anymore, he does like to play and he gets a lot of entertainment from exploring the outdoors, exploring new surroundings, um, climbing. meeting, climbing trees, yes, meeting other animals and other cats as well, which can sometimes cause problems as they're often territorial and Pack likes to challenge that. Um, he also loves it when other boaters feed him from the window. Yes, he loves other boaters, people on the towpath who often kind of look and point and exclaim, oh wow, a cat on a boat. He's a very cheerful cat. He's also got lots of toys and places to chill out on board, so he likes to kind of relax either by the fire in the winter time or in the summer he can often just be found chilling out on one of the beds, either ours or Skylar's sometimes. As you can tell, that's quite a big cat. I like to call him Chubby. He likes his food, so we always make sure he's got a big box of dry cat biscuits in the corner of the kitchen, which is his eating space. Got plenty of water there because he loves to drink his water when he does get thirsty. So we top that up with fresh clean water throughout the day. Then once a day he also gets half a tin of wet cat food as well to supplement that. Now Pac does actually have a litter tray on board. He doesn't use it that much because he prefers to go outside. Where possible we use wood pellet cat litter as it's environmentally friendly and biodegrades. If we can't get hold of this we will get the odour reducing cat litter which you can pick up in most supermarkets although we prefer the wood pellets for that. 
We find it a lot easier to clean up living on a small space like a narrowboat as it's in quite big, big pellets so it's easy to kind of sweep up if it does get kicked about. This brings us on to how kind of easy, difficult or feasible having a cat on a narrowboat is in the first place. So for us, we've not actually found it very difficult. I think Pac actually adapted to the boat quite well, but I think that is from, like we said, we lived in a caravan, so he adapted well to each place that we ever moved into. When we did move on the boat though, we did keep him in for at least, I think, the first six weeks. Yeah. So. It was quite a long time. He was frustrated by the end, but it was worth it just to make sure he was really familiar with his home. And since then, he hasn't gone missing. Um, I think the most he's been away is 48 hours, which is standard really for Pat. He, he can kind of go quite far and for quite a long time. But for us, that's normal living in a house with Pat. So we weren't concerned on the boat. It really all depends on the cat that you've got. Some cats might be more anxious and might find it a lot more difficult to adapt to boat life. So thank you for watching and um, leave us a comment. Let us know if you've got and let us know if you've got a boat cat or a boat pet. We hope you've enjoyed this and it's given you something to think about if you're considering maybe getting a boat cat or any other pet on your boat for that matter. Power not a parrot. Not that there's anything wrong with getting a parrot on a boat. I'm all for parrots on boats, just not on our boat. We're getting a parrot.